Hello, uh, this is Sean B.W. Parker, um, today talking for False Allegations Watch and Empowering the Innocent, um, talking to Mr. Patrick Graham, uh, the director of We Believe You, uh, the film on false allegations from a few years ago, and um, was on the Culture and Justice Reform podcast last year, and an uh, expert in his own way about the false allegations um, field, as we're all aware of. Um, and uh, yeah, he's going to give some of his updates and ideas, particularly about the documentary Bonfire of Agreed Terms, which was released a couple of months ago with me and others in it. Um, hi, Patrick. Hi there, Sean and everybody else. Thanks so much. Um, what have you been up to recently and what would you like to tell us as an introduction to um, uh, what we're doing today? Well, obviously, I'm, I come at this as a, someone who was falsely accused themselves and have been a, a researcher and campaigner on the issues surrounding it since 2018, well, 17, 18, that time, and uh, made the film, uh, We Believe You, as a response to that, which is many simple documented cases of people speaking their own truths about what's happened to them. Uh, and during the course of that, of course, I discovered all loads and loads of other facts. But the one that's been most bothering me recently is this statistical, statistically proven, ever increasing rise in the number of rapes recorded by the police. Now, the National Office of Statistics has been publishing the Crime Survey of England and Wales for over 34 years now and they every year they do the same survey which is quoted most often in the past by women's aid and rape crisis uh, because it details of all the rapes that they reckon happen in the uh, year in the UK because of the survey which totals in the 85 to 95,000 every year the total number of rapes and I'm not belittling that. I'm saying that that's probably correct, that figure. Uh, but what is also noticeable is they publish the percentage of those victims who go to the police. And that number has risen, but it's risen from about 8% in 2008 to 14 and 15% .5 in the last couple of years. That gives a figure of 14,000 to 15,000 rape victims who went to the police. Now, those statistics are not really arguable. They're so well established. They're deemed accurate by the NOS to within less than 1%. That, that's how, because it's such a big sample. It's such a good methodology, methodology. It's been going for so long. So they've got the steadiness of the statistic. In other words, it's more reliable than the exit polls, which tell you which uh, party has won the general election. So which it's so more reliable. reliable than that. Well, yeah. it's actually, yeah, those exit polls are, tend to be pretty accurate That's within true. two or three percent. This is accurate within less than one percent. So let's just say no one should argue, including rape crisis and women's aid, that the maximum number of rape victims going to the police is 15,000. But then we see the number of rapes recorded by the police as having gone up in that same period of time from 13,000 up to, in 2017, when I was falsely accused, 21,000, carrying on upwards to last year, 68,000. Mm. Now, anyone with any sort of mathematical brain can simply say 68,000 minus 15,000 gives you a figure of how many of those reports were erroneous or false. And I'm saying that the majority of them were false. It's as simple as that. And that means that we have many more false accusers claiming rape than genuine rape victims going to the police. Okay. Many... <laughs> um, if I were coming from devil's advocate, I would Do say, <laughs> I, I 
would say that um, they have just been encouraged to come forward and they hadn't been before and they're not false. They're just, uh, they're going to be historic. believed. So they come Are forward. you saying they're historic? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. The historic cases, i.e. people are reporting things that was historic, but they never reported them before. Because the way the survey is, is phrased, and this is something that I've checked out with Professor Sir David Spiegelhalter, who's pretty much the top-notch guy in the field of statistics, they don't allow, um, in, in those figures, they in the survey, they ask, were you raped within the last year? Because that's the annual survey. They can't afford to have that bleeding of potential new reports of old rapes. So they're only looking at each time at, at that. So the <clears> figures <throat> of who's going have been consistently rising, but they're rising within that parameter. So it can't be a, a memory issue. And incidentally, it's only since the figures jumped from about 21,000 up to eight, uh, 68,000 that Women's Aid and Rape Crisis stopped publishing the, the figures about the number of people, the percentage of women who don't go to the police out mm. of the total number of rapes. They stopped putting it on the front pages of their posters. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, uh, kind of here we are. It's the two sort of middle-aged white men. I'm calling you middle-aged, and myself. I'm, I'm creeping into you know um, older than middle-aged. <laughs> yeah, um, late middle-aged. And we're talking about this woman's issue mostly, of course, not not all, of course, but mostly. And we're talking about rape crisis and and women's aid with a slight eyebrow, as in skept skepticism. Yeah. Do you want to expand on that skepticism? Well, my, my, all my research keeps pointing me back to a feminist dogma that has been hammered home. In fact, it's still hammered home twice a week in the BBC and The Guardian, who are the chief cheerleaders, that, that rape is this huge, horrible problem and all men are either rapists or potential rapists and we should look at men that way. Uh, and they always say, and the police echo this, uh, that false accusations are vanishingly rare. Hmm. That's bullshit. Uh, I know it's bullshit because I made the film. I know how many people are out there. There's thousands of us. <laughs> um, I know the number of people who are wrongly imprisoned, roughly. I know the number of people whose lives are ruined. I know who the real victims are. But feminism is shouting ever louder that no, they are the only victims. Women are the only victims here. And mm -hmm. of course, in those figures on rape, male rape is not even included because, quote, the numbers are too small to be statistically safe. Ah. And yet when I worked with a group of gay men in uh, Cardiff, they said that there were two rapes of men outside the clubs in Cardiff every week. Blimey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and mostly, ironically, rapes by straight, inverted commas, men who were wanting to somehow get revenge on gay men coming out of gay clubs. Yeah. That's interesting it's a perverse, perverse idea. I, I can't quite get my head around some of the, the thinking that must go on. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but my knowledge of the statistics and my knowledge of the numbers which Cardiff gay community represents is that that cannot be exclusive to Wales. I think that must be broader, in which case it's much more likely that there are, well, 10,000 uh, male rapes a year minimum. Mm -hmm. And that is statistically significant. But guess who goes even less often to the police than women do? Men. Gay okay, guys. Yeah, men. Exactly. Because you're not allowed to be a victim if you're a man. That's We are not allowed, really, psychologically, we are not allowed to play victim when we're talking about this. You know, you, you're not... You're, the, the culture and the tropes that we have for men do not allow us to say, hey, I'm a victim here. Mm -hmm. you know, that's almost true of any crime. You're not allowed to say you're a victim of fraud. You're not allowed to say you're a victim of violence. It, it's really hard for our society to accept men as victims. Yeah. And I think modern feminism has a lot to answer for on that front. Saying things like women are the chief casualties of war. 
excuse me? <laughs> you know, hello? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, kind of on this, this point, uh, as an extension to it, um, so Dr. Michael Norton of University of Bristol, Empowering the Innocent Boss, and Stuart, Stuart Wayton, uh, Stuart Wayton of the University of Abate, who's been called the Scottish Jordan Peterson, um, are both <laughs> active right now on the subject that the Law Commission are putting through um, a proposal until September where the judges will be compelled to to direct based on rape myths, uh, theoretical rape myths. You know, these things aren't proven by yeah. science, but which we've been hearing about for years. Um, yeah. The False Allegations Watch is very animated on this. Um, what, what are your thoughts on what they're trying to do? This, this is happening this year. This is, this is the feminist agenda being pushed right up through the judiciary. Um, and I think it's disgusting and disgraceful. Um, the idea that judges can direct and then also, of course, we've got the Scottish idea that we don't need juries at all uh, because they're worried that juries actually don't find uh, men guilty when they are. Whereas, in fact, we know that there's probably somewhere between 900 and 1500 men wrongly imprisoned uh, where there was no rape occurred. So you could argue that juries have done Given, given the whole argument that it is better that uh, a thousand guilty go free rather than one man be falsely imprisoned. Well, mm -hmm. we're quite happy to falsely imprison over a thousand men. That no concern at all to the feminist brigade. They would rather half the men on the planet were in prison than their agenda is challenged. Uh, and the agenda for, for rape is all wrong. It's wrong from the very off. I suppose... I don't know if Michael Norton is into this, but I did the research a while back. Rape is originally a property law, men's mm. property. And this, this whole idea that uh, damaged goods were what was, so the burglary was a crime that you could either steal from someone's house or rape someone in that house. Burglary with intent to rape or burglary with intent to steal. Those were the two crimes of burglary. Uh, and there's a hilarious test case which proved what the difference between burglary and uh, for, for rape and theft actually was. But I won't go into that now. Law students know it very well. Mm. Um, but it should be, and this was in my own feminist thinking a long time ago, that there is no such crime as rape because that's the that's the um, property law, if you want. You're permanently damaging somebody's goods, not hurting the woman as a person, that's sexual assault. And if you actually had a degrees of sexual assault, everything from pinching the bum, which is a sexual assault, right up to violent rape with weaponry and defecation and all those, you know, that's mm -hmm. sexual assault with extreme. You can have a degree of punishments to do with that that covers everything that everybody ever does, but you get rid of that emotive word, rape, and you start dealing with the people who are the victims, and then maybe we can also start dealing with the victims of 50,000 women last year who tried to pervert justice and get a man convicted for rape. 50,000 is your stat on that? Well, that's my minimum number. It's likely to be more. The NOS would suggest it's higher. I'm saying 50,000 is a minimum number. That's a that's an interesting figure to to, to 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 be able to quote, you know. But 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 you're happy with that, and I'm happy with that. As you've figure, explained, I'd you've like explained. to see someone argue. I'd like to see someone argue those NOS and the police record figures down because I don't really see how it can be done. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've had people begin to try and then give up, but I've had no one follow through and convince me that there is an argument that says sixty-eight thousand minus fifteen thousand actually equals zero. Yeah, I can't yeah. get. No. That's fascinating. Um, um, you, you, you were just talking about like the spectrum of sexual assault um, idea, yeah. which is to a certain extent how it works still, though it's got got the rapes at the top and then it goes to sexual assault after category yeah. three. Um, I've just done a done a piece just recently about um, the false allegations forum, which has been started up, and to really push for the idea of sexual. Uh, 
misadventure, sexual misadventure, yeah. which is the I like case. That. In, I like that idea. Yeah, that which is not assault. Very, very much not assault. That that falls into a different category. Sexual misadventure is when there is no real clear position on consent. So it's not like someone's gone against someone not giving consent and forced. Sexual misadventure for me would be where somebody might be under the influence of drugs, but the other party doesn't know. Um, mm -hmm. It could be all sorts of elements in there which could come under your lovely category of sexual misadventure. And mm. also, I've seen a case not so long ago where it was two 15-year-olds, uh, both breaking the law, but how is it rape if they're both 15-year-olds and it was consensual? I this, don't, I don't get that. This is a huge one, isn't it? Because there's the Romeo and Juliet law, or the direction yeah. anyway, that's law, but where if it's in that area, there's some leniency put. However, if you're yeah. a parent of one of those and you want to push it and, and the officer in charge wants their convictions up or they've got to be in their bonnet on this subject, which is very common, isn't it? Then they yeah. can they can they can pursue that and get yes. those kids, whichever ever sex, um just get the future destroyed just from that word on their yeah. record. I mean, that has got to be a problem even for the for the feminists. I don't like using the word feminist because I, I don't like to put myself in the camp, but you know, I know I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have I've had huge arguments with my sister. I I, I like there's a, a good argument on YouTube that we should call ourselves equalists and not yeah. feminists. Uh, yeah. Equalists, equalism is what we really should be about. And unfortunately, a lot of feminists don't like equalism. <laughs> no, no, it's they not helpful. Want it. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of gets gets to the heart of things now, isn't it? Where what 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 we're sort of suggesting is is the reasonableness, the equality, and sexual misadventure. These things yes. to apply some hum, human enlightenment, English, British, whatever sort of law to what they've they've got going on. I have to say they, as in, um, they've got a narrative which does pay, but I don't think it's all about the money. I I, I do believe it's all about kind of trying to prove those old ideas. All kind of men are rapists. Correct. They're not going to stop until they prove that correct until every man is also out of public office uh, if they're not supporting their cause, because not all feminists are women, of course. There's the uh, facilitators, right? So I, I, the worst offenders. The facilitator in a second. Yeah. yeah. One of the worst offenders to me is Keir Starmer. Right. Uh, um, <laughs> if I say I, facilitator, I, it's Keir Starmer, that's the one, yeah. No, the, he, he facilitated the feminist, we believe you, that was him. He started that, the idea that if a woman, and it was always a woman in, in the original language, says that they've been raped, then the police should believe them. The technical detail was that they should at first believe them, but investigate properly. Well, the police managed to forget that latter bit mm -hmm. and say, we just believe them. And then we have a suspect and then we find the evidence that supports that case. We ignore the evidence that suggests it's completely wrong. We hide evidence that comes up later when we've already put in a lot of work to show this is the right guy and this all happened. And now the evidence is saying not. We'll try and hide that and stop that happening. Um, that's been going on for ages. I mean, Liam Allen's case was the most famous, perhaps, where they didn't bother to look at the obvious evidence. This idea of digital rape that the feminists put forward is fear of digital discovery of false accusation. That's what it's all about. That's uh, that's um, kind of, uh, uh, just to let you know, absolutely a part of this law commission thing um, yeah. to have digital strip searches um, to be definitely put in. After, after all the fuss about the Liam Allen thing, everyone's saying this mustn't happen. They've decided that it must happen. We're going to, I mean, what I think about this, not in a journalistic way, but in an activist way, as we're speaking now, is that if you're going to make a very serious allegation, because everyone says that sexual assault and rape is up there with murder, right? Though we can see by your figures that it just can't be the case. But if we presume that they are, if you're going to make that allegation, then you need to be analysed yourself. You know, you can't get away from that analysis. And if you want to prove it, by the way, you should be happy to have everyone go through Absolutely. your stuff. Take it all. Look at it. Look, see, he did. Um, yeah. But the thing is that the perspective's been changed, isn't it? The whole Absolutely. of the moral perspective. Keir Starmer thinks he's doing the right thing, uh, and 
to Julie Bindle, Alison Saunders, and all I could name a, a, a hundred Charlotte oh, yeah. Proudman. Yeah. You know, these people actually think that they're in the moral right, and that's the problem, yes. isn't it? Because I think the they, two of us speaking right so. now are in, in the moral right. But and they also the talk about the same men as well as women talk about toxic masculinity. Well, if there's toxic masculinity, there has to be toxic femininity as well. Mm -hmm. It just stands to logical reason. So let's get rid of that phrase. There's toxic behaviours, there's toxic cultures, but masculinity, no. Masculinity is not part of that. If someone is a man and they're behaving toxically, they're the same sort of bastard as the woman who falsely accuses who's behaving toxically. And the manipulation that is classically often perceived as a, as a female trait uh, although that's also unfair, but th that sort of manipulative behaviour, which goes on with false accusations as a matter of course, because they're lying, you know, I mean, this, this, is, this is really dangerous stuff. I have two friends, both priests, who died because directly false accusations. Mm -hmm. One of them's in my film, the other one's Bishop Michael of Gloucester. The doctors said because of the, the stress of the false accusations, their immune systems collapsed and they got cancer and died. They were very nice, gentle people. They didn't want to hurt anybody. So they didn't get angry and get campaigny about it. No. I got angry and got campaigned about it because I hate that passivity when it comes to injustice. I cannot stand it. Yeah. So that's me. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear it. Um, there's a strange thing that's happened between that time that you're talking about, um, early sort of 2020, uh, the teens, um, the, yeah. the earlier part of this century, and now post Me Too, uh, people like me coming out and <laughs> it's all bollocks. Is there's been a change in the morality of it, where basically there are so many people accused, and much younger and younger and younger, that yeah. they're being much more ambivalent about it. Basically, they're not seeing it as the moral damage. Uh, which is incredibly dangerous for the the feminist activists because it's not that it's been decriminalized but it's been democratized so every second guy has some kind of allegation against him whether at work or this or that and it's not always just about s uh, sexual assault stuff it's about all kinds of different things so the risk they run right. is overkill i suppose is that correct is, yeah. does that sort of sound right well i you? think i hope it's a risk that they run because certainly there's been that degree of overkill, I see it all the time. I mean, I, I do get fed up with with reading about the, the terrible cases that are brought and the and the witch hunts that go on. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not just the famous people, which is what a lot of other people think. A lot of the public think this is just is just the Rolf Harris's and the Paul Schofields and all those people. And I'm saying, no, 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 that's that's not what it's about. The headline, this is about. Yeah thousands of ordinary people who don't make the headlines who That's are right. dying and, and whose lives are wrecked and families are wrecked who have to pull this child out of school because some silly girl made a false accusation against him and now everyone in the school is at him and despite the fact it's all disproven mm. uh, and even if the girl's been taken away they still have to move school and town to stop having dog shit pushed through their doors through their letterboxes and windows smashed in the middle of the night, but because people like to be witch hunters. And yeah. that's happening to 14 year old boys all around Britain. You know, it's not an isolated yeah. case. That's right. And it sort of depends on the nature of the town and the politics inside that and all the rest of it too, yeah. like affecting things. And like um, the, the place I'm going to with this thing about like the end of morality in, in a way, I mean, I'm opening it up to this, is that like with that which we're talking about with the Law Commission, getting rid of the juries and having the judges kind of do things off the bat, off their own training, which will obviously be activist feminist sort of training, and then yeah. added to the CLRN, the Criminal Law Reform Network, um, have a plan to introduce deceit sex as a law at the same time that they're doing both these on two wings so the empowering the innocent right, are taking right. on both so they're going to make deceit sex so if you meet someone in a pub and say i'm a barrister you go to bed with them and the next day they discover you're a bricklayer they're going to accuse you of rape because of deceit 
<laughs> right. So that that is the that is what's actually going to happen. Though they're not going to put it in those terms. But Doctor. No, because if I if I if I went out with a girl, I'd never say I was a barrister. I'd say I was a bricklayer if I was a barrister. <laughs> it, it's a it's a better start. Exactly. A better, <laughs> because better being a barrister means you're a scumbag quite often. <laughs> <laughs> What, what I'm getting, getting towards with this is because of the amount of shit that you've just talked about being chucked out there and this kind yeah. of uh, kind of moralistic um, kind of manipulation of the courts, you put those things together and you're looking towards a different kind of behaviour out there where yeah. having an allegation against you is going to be a norm or probably almost whatever sex as well, increasingly as the sexes become dissipated. I mean, what's going yeah, on with yeah. that? But, um, I mean, that's the democrat the democratization of sexual assault at work, isn't it? Well, I suppose so. Although it's a perverse idea of what democracy is, but then we are living in a perverse idea of what democracy is. It's right. supposed to be about representation of the people. Um, you know, Boris Johnson and people like Trump have made a complete mockery of it uh, because they garner support from overtly going against um, the goodwill, the, the good for the public. They overtly go against it in order to appeal to the loudest mob. And yeah. that's the danger we have here is that all this is, it appeals to the mob, the witch hunting mob. Um, plenty of men were bashing on those prison vans with their 10 year old kids in who killed Jamie Bulger. They wanted blood. They wanted to kill those children because they killed someone. Yeah. Uh, and and they still do, don't they? Yeah, they still do. It's what we deal with. And the, the problem is that if you say to, to anybody in this country, in any country, really, what do you think of the word rape? I fucking hate them. I want to kill them. And then the, the response after that is, well, what about when two people kind of go to bed together drunk and then the boyfriend accuses the guy the next day? Well, oh, that's not rape. <laughs> You're like, well, the problem is that the whole of what our conversation today is they've expanded everything into that. Where is yeah. it sort of sh kind of sh best thing to call it sexual misadventure and to treat it with conflict resolution, which is what I've been pushing now for ages, you know. Um, yeah. And rightly so, in my opinion, and long and long may you, you know, may you succeed in that task, because those steps are where we need to get to. And yet we're, we're, we're like, um, you know, the lone fish fighting up a waterfall, yeah. uh, constantly being pushed back, you know, well, we've got to remember that the salmon make it some of the salmon, they do make it they don't all get caught by bears some of the salmon get there and they get there we've got to do that we've got to keep fighting we've got to keep using the weapons of statistics of truth of uh, uh, common sense injections into the conversations that are going on um you know the exploitation of the gaps in people's arguments and making them take off their blinkers which make them see things always in terms of women victim man aggressor that's all i can see that's all i can see it's all i can see you know they've got to stop doing that um, yeah i i also think that you know we do need to tackle violence and rape is a part of violence and domination and one of the ways we do that is by getting women to raise their sons better oh. um that's that's another thing. Oh, oh, hang on. How do men become this horrible being when they are born of women? Eh? How does that happen? Oh, did the mothers do something wrong? <laughs> well, probably yes, seeing as boys are pushed away when they come for a cuddle and the girls are cuddled and the boys are told to go and sort out their problems with their fists. That's generally what mothers as well as fathers do. And yeah. it's not it's why, you know, men are assaulted in the street far more than women are. Six mm. times more often are men assaulted in the street. And yet we still warn women about going out at the street at night. It's at home they're at bigger risk. <laughs> you know, yeah. They're at risk from their uncles and stepdads and whoever else. They're not so much at risk out on the street at all. It's all myth from the media. And we've got to sort out all these issues before we can... You know, we can then illustrate the perverse, idiotic logic that is driving the law and driving it in the wrong direction. Mm. Because all of these things tie together. It's misperception. 
It's failure to look at truth and fact, and it's failure to understand human behavior in which consent is not something that two people who fancy each other get involved with. They never say, do you consent to me having sex with you tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I will consent now, but I may, I reserve the right to change my mind later. I mean, Jacob Rees-Mogg might do that, but no sane person on the planet ever does that. You have body language and signals and all those things. That's what sex is. It's playful. It's not a bloody lecture mm -hmm. <laughs> with questions and answers, you know. What a load of baloney, in other words. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, there's some sort of a post bullshit um kind of rebirth happening out there there is a renaissance going on yeah, yeah. I, think, I think what you're talking about it really feeds in into this and it's this part of it and those you know the actual rapists we were talking about earlier yes they're there i've seen them in prison they're a very very tiny number uh, of course when you mention that the activists go bonkers but yeah. I got the stats and they are just not, you know, they're all locked up in cafes being studied. You know, yeah. the people that we're talking about, the 50,000 people that you just talked about, which is our, you know, the people to think about are not that. And yeah. and that's what, and that's the fight that we still have and that I'm happy to take on. Patrick, I have to wrap it up. It's going, it's doing its thing. The time got, is running out. Yeah. The time is, but I think you've got all the points out and that was really, um, really great, wasn't it? That was really interesting. So, it's um, Thank you so much. And uh, this will be out on Empowering the Innocent soon. And I guess if people are watching this, so we're going to put a link, as always, in Till We Believe You below. So have a look at that. Thank you, Patrick. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Sean. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, that's. Oh. Stop.